1949, on his 30th birthday, Liberace was earning 3,000 a week, but he was still dissatisfied with the way his career was going. He wanted to reach a mass audience and just didn't know how. He hired new managers, the same team that represented my soon-to-be boss, Lawrence Welk, and they introduced him to Don Federson, the new manager of KLAC-TV in Los Angeles. He was a man with foresight, imagination, intuition, the perfect combination for success in the explosive new medium of television. And Don drove Liberace over to the San a TV antenna on every house, and Don told him, that's your audience. The Liberace television show made its debut on KLAC-TV in January of 1952. He received just $1,000 for each program, and out of it, he had to pay his brother George and the five-piece orchestra. The reviewers ignored the show, but the public loved it. show tonight with a number that's kind of a classic with me. I call it Tchaikovsky 12th Street Rag. <laughs> changed it. I changed it and made it faster because that's the way I find my friends like to hear it. And uh, Robert Ripley even referred to this new version in his Believe It or Not one day. He said there were 6,000 notes in it that were played in two minutes time. And the only reason I mentioned it is because I thought you might like to count the notes as I play it. <laughs>
back in just a moment, but right now, I want you to hear this very important announcement from our sponsors. Incidentally, if any of Tchaikovsky's relatives were listening to that last number, uh, I want them to know I was only kidding. I, I know it was written by a man named Bowman. Well, all kidding aside, I'd like to do a number by a Polish composer now. His name is Szarbenka, and uh, he wrote a very delightful little dance called the Polish National Dance, and it's the kind of music they play at Polish weddings. And the reason I seem to know about this sort of thing is because I'm half Polish. I have a Polish mother, and uh, that's why I know about it. Incidentally, George, will you tell your musicians if they play the accompaniment real nice that the next time I get an offer for a Polish wedding, they can come along, okay? It doesn't pay much money, but all you can eat and drink, they're wonderful. <laughs>
beside the tree tenderly. The trembling trees caress the breeze. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to pay tribute to a great star of the theater who did so much to popularize the music of the Latin American countries. Her name was Carmen Miranda. Here is the number she introduced. It is dedicated to her native land, Brazil.
Miss Cardell. I also had two suits. <laughs> I know what you ladies are thinking. If he plays as good as he looks, he's got it made, right? Hard to believe that 
with this beautiful music was very unpopular during Tchaikovsky's generation. He lived for even a faint word of praise, which never came to him. He corresponded with a woman for 13 years that he never actually met, and she was the only one who encouraged Tchaikovsky in his music. It wasn't until he was in his 50s when he came to America to open the famed Carnegie Hall that Tchaikovsky experienced his first happiness. The Americans greeted him with open arms and loved his music, and he had hoped someday to return to America where he might spend the rest of his days. But his tours took him back to Europe and into a plague-infested area where one day, while writing a composition, he carelessly drank a glass of unboiled water and died within a few hours. The music that we best remember Tchaikovsky by is his famous concerto in B-flat minor. this folk song here. 
because it comes from the people and every generation has added some little variation to this song and I, I would like to add a few variations of my own right now to that wonderful folk song, O Chichornia, Dark Eyes.
possible dream to be better far than you are to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star this is my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless no matter how far to be willing to give when there's no more to give to be willing to die so that honor and justice may live and i know if i'll only be true to this glorious quest that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when i'm laid to my rest That one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach 